let's move on and talk about some protozoa that can affect the central nervous system. First and foremost is toxoplasmosis. This is caused by Toxoplasma gondii. Toxoplasma gondii is transmitted through cysts in meat, which is our most common transmission, but we can also see it in cat feces. This is going to be a typical buzzword on the USMLE for pregnant females that could have become sick due to an infection caused by the cat. So we always tell pregnant females to stay away from cat litter throughout the course of their pregnancy. The symptoms of a toxoplasmosis infection are often asymptomatic or you can have flu-like symptoms in healthy individuals. Where our issue comes in are when we have immunocompromised patients. That is where we can find brain abscesses that will show ring enhancing lesions on a CT scan. As we just mentioned, pregnancy is something to be aware of with a toxoplasmosis infection. Keep those pregnant women away from cat feces. To diagnose this, we use a serology, or we can also do a biopsy and see a tachyzoite in the biopsy, as you see here on the left. The serology is going to show a high IgM, or a rising IgM. To treat toxoplasmosis, we use a combination drug, sulfadiazine and pyrimethamine. Our next protozoa that can affect the central nervous system is Nagleria fowleri. Nagleria fowleri is unique because it only is found in warm freshwater lakes, ponds, and streams. You will not see this in seawater that is salinated, and you will not see it in cold lakes and ponds. So this is typically relegated to the southern portions of the United States where it is warm during the summer. Symptoms of a Nagleria fowleri infection include severe prefrontal headache, nausea, high fever, and an altered sense of smell. The cyst form, as you can see here on the right, is the form that is found in the water to help it survive unfavorable conditions. Once the conditions in the water are favorable, it will break out of the cyst form and form the trophozoite form, as you see here. The trophozoite form is uh, the infectious form, and this basically will infect humans by entering the nasal mucosa from someone swimming in these warm freshwater lakes, and it grabs onto the olfactory nerve and it ascends into the brain. The reason this is very fatal in people that have this infection is because once the symptoms show up it is a very progressed disease and it progresses very fast. This is a rapidly fatal meningoencephalitis also known as primary amoebic meningoencephalitis. To diagnose this we're looking for modal amoebas in the spinal fluid. So a spinal tap will show these modal biflagellate amoebas that you see here on the left side of that picture. Treatment is with amphotericin B. Those people that have been able to survive were treated very early on in their stage of disease with amphotericin B, but it does usually leave some residual effects if they are able to survive. Finally, African sleeping sickness is caused by trypanosoma brucei. It is transmitted by the tsetse fly, which is a painful bite from the fly. The tsetse fly bite injects trypanomastigotes into the bloodstream that then undergo replication inside the human body. Symptoms of African sleeping sickness include enlarged lymph nodes, a recurring fever, somnolence, and a coma. So that is why we call it the sleeping sickness. To diagnose this, we do a blood smear, and you will see those trypomastigotes in the blood smear. Treatment is with ceramin for an acute infection, and if this is chronic, we use milarsoparol. You can remember this with the mnemonic, I sure am mellow when I'm sleeping. So sleeping sickness, I sure, ceramin, am mellow, milarsoparol.